Well, good evening, my friends. Kevin the Comic Doctor coming to you with another live CGC unboxing. My friends, two, two CGC boxes to unravel for you this evening. My friends, I'm Kevin the Comic Doctor. I am a comic book presser. I'm also an authorized CGC dealer located way up in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada. And this is another live CGC unboxing. Guys, CGC is that company down in Sarasota, Florida, where most comic book fans send their books to be graded. And like I said, I'm an authorized CGC dealer, which gives me that unique ability to send books on your behalf to CGC to, to, CGC to be graded. When they return back to me in Oshawa, uh, I, I come on here and I do a live virtual show and tell, showing off client books. These are not my book. These are client books. I don't know what grades these are, guys. I just opened these boxes up. And as they come out, we're all seeing them for the very, very first time. Guys, welcome. If you're a comic book fan, I sure hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And you know what? By Actually, by hitting that subscribe button, you can join in the conversation. That's right. I go on over to my chat room periodically throughout the stream and talk to you guys. And if you have any questions about cleaning, pressing, uh, grading, what's happening in the world of comic books today, I'll be more than happy to engage with you uh, regarding any topic you may have in mind. Um, yeah, let's get started. I have uh, I have two boxes, like I said, so it's going to take us a little while to get through this. And I'll be honest, I'm pretty darn tired today. I've got a, and I've got books to ship out today too, so I got to get moving here. So, already, guys, in the chat room, get ready. Here we go. Let me get my overhead cam going uh where's my overhead there it is okay boom first book asm 300 newsstand and an 8.5 we also have a harley quinn 24 uh from 2023 uh leave variant cover in a 9.8 that kind of broke my streak there guys i was always starting this stream with 9.8 second books a 9.8 and the third books a 9.8 as well we have a excuse me an amazing spider-man 25 ramita jr variant cover b ASM 25 from 2023 as well. I'm also checking, guys, I always check the slabs out here because if there is a crack in a slab, I only have a certain amount of time to report that and get the, the slab replaced by CGC gratis. Otherwise, we're on the hook. 9.8, we also have a Sandman number one. Uh, and a 9.6. There we go. We also have an Invincible. Number one, Whatnot Virgin Edition in a 9.8. Slab's looking good so far. Looking good. We also have a Wolverine number one. This is a reholder, guys. This is a reholder book. I think one of one of you guys wanted that uh the, the, the Wolverine uh, custom label on that. So uh yeah, we got a 9.8 white pager with a custom label. All right, the stack's getting high. I'll do a couple more. Okay, we also have... What the heck is that? Okay. We also have a Marvel Super Hero Secret Wars uh, number 8, Canadian price variant in an 8.0. Custom label. I wonder how much longer this custom label is going to be going for because... Uh, in fact, all the custom labels we have currently have been on there for quite a while. So I'm wondering if they're going to change those up pretty soon. We also have a 9.4 copy of the exact same book. I believe it's from the same owner. But no, this was on the exact same. This is the uh, direct copy. It's in a 9.4. Let's see if I can get one more book on this lot before I uh, sneak over. We have a 9.0 copy, Canadian price variant. Also with that awesome custom label right there. You know what? I'm going to try for one more because it's the exact same book anyway. Uh, this one here, however, is a 9.4. This is a newsstand copy. Now, check this out, guys. You know, I know a lot of you guys already know this, but some people might not know. These book books look pretty darn close, don't they? They look pretty much identical, but they're actually quite different. If you look very carefully, they both have uh, the um, the uh, UPC code at the bottom there. The uh, Right here is one there, and then there's one over there on that book. So we we know right off the bat that they're not they're not direct copies. These were not purchased in a comic book store. These are probably purchased these are probably purchased at a, at a, at a variety store, 7-Eleven, whatever. And um, you do also notice 
the price is different. 60 cents on this one versus the 75 cents on this one. The 75 cent being the Canadian price variant, the 60 cent being the standard newsstand copy. Um, now there's also uh, a direct copy and the direct copy would look kind of similar to, to this. It would have, you know, uh, either Spider-Man in the bottom corner or whatever hero they're celebrating. And that's what a direct copy would look like as well. Uh, minus the UPC code, okay? So anyways, if anybody doesn't know that, there are three copies that people search for for this book. The Canadian price variant being the most uh, sought after and the most valuable. Check out GPA. You'll be shocked at how expensive these books are. Okay, my stack is high. I had to put these away. Let's go over to the chat room and see who's here today. Uh, we've got quite a few guys here in the room. Mike's here talking about the X-Men. Yes, I, you know what, guys? I watched the X-Men. Uh, I watched the X-Men last week um, on my cell phone. I wasn't expecting much. Uh, my wife had fallen asleep. I said, you know what? I'm going to throw this on and watch it. I used to watch the X-Men cartoon from time to time. But I got to tell you, this ca this cartoon had no right being as good as it as it was. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, the writing was quite good. The, the The animation was similar to the old animation. The voices were very similar. Many of the voice actors did come back, but it was actually, it was actually quite good. So if you're an X-Men fan or were a fan of the old X-Men animated series, you're going to want to check out this new X-Men 97. So far, so good. Um, Adam says, love me some X-Men. Yes. Hey, John is in the house. How you doing, John? Good seeing you on Saturday, you and your brother. Lewis is here. How you doing? Yo, yo, yo. What's up with you, my friend? Eric says, new episodes are Wednesdays. Good, because I've been looking uh, when, every day I check. Is, is a new one on? Is a new one dropped? Is a new one dropped? And five, so, so tomorrow the new one will drop, I take it. Excellent. Uh, hey, doing, Warren? Good to see you. Chameleon is here. How you doing? Eric McGowan, good evening. Good evening to you, sir. Robert N., how is it going? Rob says, howdy. Right, howdy right on back. Joey Lane, how you doing, Joey? Good to see you, my friend. Uh, Craig is here as well. Cool Hand Luke is here. Paul Newman himself, how you doing from Montreal? Good to see you, bonjour. Terrible sack, can't do a good, I, yeah, anyways. Dave's here, hi, hoping I can finally stop any of you watching and submit some of my own comics for pressing a CGC. Did you guys see that stack of books I showed off on Instagram? Holy cow, I couldn't believe those, those came in on Saturday. Like, wow, what an order, what an order. We're already, we're already halfway uh, through cleaning these books. So uh, yeah, a lot of fun. Um, don't forget to sum up the doctor. Yeah, do as Tam says. There's 37 of you in the in the room right now. If you wouldn't mind, just taking your mouse and clicking that like button. It does help with my analytics. It lets YouTube promote my channel to other uh, enthusiasts like us, which would be great. Um, uh, Rock City says, CBCS will only be missed after CGC will inevitably F up SIG verifications. We're going to talk about that. That's right. We're going to talk about later on. Maybe when this box is done, we'll take a little break, a little breather. And we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about, uh, will C CBCS be missed if CBCS goes the way of the dodo bird? I want to know what you think. Because listen, there are some people who are really quite fond of CBCS. So someone's going to miss them. <laughs> Someone. Many are going to miss it. But let's let's talk about that. Let's see. Let's unpack that a little bit. Let's talk about that in a couple of minutes, okay? Uh, John says, X-Men 96 absolutely killed it. Craig Smith, 100% better than the last season, which was made in the Philippines. I enjoyed the first two episodes a lot. So did I. West Coast Avengers, the doctors and West Coast Avengers, good to see you. Welcome, my friend. We're going to get you on this show one day, very soon. Um, uh, yes, uh, I am in and I'm working. I've been working, guys. I've been going crazy today. I've been working like a madman all day. And uh, it's not over yet. It's only what? It's uh, 8.41 here at Eastern Standard Time, just outside of Toronto. And I got a feeling I won't be sleeping until closer to midnight. Sean Conley, good evening. How you doing, Sean? All right, let's keep going, guys. Got some nice bangers coming up too here. Uh, I see I see. it's something I'm not liking, I'll be honest, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, let me go over. Next, we have a really nice copy of, uh, of Daredevil 158. Very important book, obviously. Frank Miller's first work right here in a 9.6 white pager. Nothing wrong with that at all. We also have, wow, look at this. The Crow, number one, in a 9.6 right here. I, I, You see my expression, guys. I'm still not digging how these, these books are, are fitting in these, in these slabs. Uh, even that, even that uh, Wolverine number one re-slab. Came back in 9.8. It's 9.8. It's fantastic. I'm not liking how they're fitting in those slabs. We've got a Daredevil 
Number volume two, number nine. Um, first appearance of Echo. Oh, this is worth millions now. <laughs> it's a nine point. It's a nine point eight. Nothing wrong with that. The first appearance, still a key book. Glad you got it. Uh, Joey says, doing good, been getting some nice books lately and waiting to send to you, but sadly not trusting CGC at the moment. LOL. I hope CBC's, CBC's can, CGC's can find a way to stay around. Oh, CBCS will find a way to stay around. LOL. We need more than just CGC. That's a very important point, and we're going to talk about that very, very soon. Uh, okay, what else we got in here? We also have... Oh, oh my gosh. Holy cow. Bill. Bill, are you out there? Okay. Great copy here. Okay, this is a very important book, obviously. Uh, her Supergirl's Existence Revealed. Classic cover. I'm going to tell you, I thought maybe we could get it to a set. We, we were talking about this the other day. Phil was in my shop on Saturday. And he had the first appearance of Supergirl. He received a 6.5 on that. And I said, you know what, Phil? You know, they're from the same collection. They've been handled the same way. You know, expect probably a 6.5 to a 7.5. 9.2 white pager. Holy cow. I think Phil is going to be very, very pleased. Very pleased indeed. I know I am. Okay. Moving right along. We got a 9.2 copy, newsstand copy of ASM 300. Right there. Check in for cracks. Check in for cracks. All right. This, these are some Ash's books now from Montreal as well. Ash had four copies of New Mutants 98. We decided to send two down with the first order and two are on their way down as of tomorrow, first one comes back at a 9.8, which is great. Next one comes back at a 9.8, which is also great. I wonder how the other two will do. I hope they both get come back 9.8, but I am seeing something here that I don't like. This is a disappointment here. 7.0, first appearance of the Kingpin, purple label. Small amount of color touch on cover. Now, when I look at this cover, I see all kinds of, you know, white, you know, chipping and, you know, scuff marks along the edge of this book. There's no real color touch evident, but they're saying there's color touch on there, which is really disheartening. I wish, the one thing I wish CGC would do, especially when you send a high value book like this in, I wish they would contact us and offer us the opportunity to do color touch removal while the book is there the only way for us to be sure a book uh, has color touch in the eyes of cgc is to send the book for a color touch or sorry not color touch for restoration pre-screen that's a whole other service in itself but you could set you can send a book for color uh, for restoration pre-screen and if, a, if they determine at that time uh, a book has restoration, they will notify you. There's a fee for that, of course. They will notify you, and then you can you can, you know, have the book go through the restoration removal if it's if it's possible. Uh, I have sent books for color cut, touch removal. I've sent books for restore removal, and they've rejected books in the past. But this to me is frustrating. I sent this book uh, for Ash for uh, uh, to be graded. They recognized there was color touch on it. I, I don't understand why they wouldn't at that point kind of contact me and say, hey, listen, your book has is, 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 is got color touch on it. Would you like us to perform a, a restoration pre-screen or sorry, color touch pre-screen to see if it could be removed? And then upcharge me, upcharge me and fix it so that it comes back blue label. Because they know, don't they? That people can't stand these purple labels. Um, so now, if I want to send, a, now if we want to try to get a color touch off, we have two options. Open her up, take a closer look, and try to find it myself. It got by me and, you know, my team. Um, that being said, I'll be honest, when we're doing, when we're doing, when we're pressing and cleaning books, we're looking, we're keeping our eye open for this stuff, but we are not, and I've said this before, we don't do a thorough, thorough inspection for, for restoration. If it's glaring, if it's there and we pick up on it, we of course contact the owner, but sometimes they get by us, right? Which really sucks. 
But I wish they would just contact us and say, listen, we can't, we noticed this. Do you want us to do something about it before we ship it back to you? The same thing happened on that ASM one that I had back at Christmas time. It had a tear seal on it. I missed, I missed it. And when they told me it had a tear seal, I was pissed. I said, there's no tear seal on that book. And when I got the book back, sure enough, there was a tear seal on it. I missed it. I actually missed it. So, you know, I had to, you know, call them back and apologize for my, <laughs> for my, how should I put this? My, 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 my over the top behavior perhaps. And, uh, but I cracked it. I cracked it. I removed the tear seal and I sent it back. But I would have preferred if they would have just called and said, hey, Kevin, there's a tear seal on this thing. Do you want us to take it off for you? And I would say, yeah, let's do it. Charge me whatever. It would have saved me shipping. It would have saved me time. Uh, you know, that that's the only thing. All right, let's keep going here. We got more books. Another one of Ash's books right here. It's uh, Tales of Suspense 57. First appearance of, of uh, Hawkeye in a 6.0. And my stack is getting really high here. Let's come back to, let's pack these babies up and I'll come back to the, let's go to the chat really quick. And then we're going to talk about CBCS. We'll talk about it. So I'm curious to see what you guys, Joy already talked about it a little bit. Some other guys are talking about it now. CBCS will certainly be missed should they fold it up. Competition is healthy in any industry. Um, darn right. Craig says, looks like it would, it would get the same grade if it was removed. They should just give the same grade and just note the color touch and pack. Listen, I've been saying that for a long time. I've been saying that, Craig, for a long time. Uh, and I think CBCS went that route. They they have a blue label and and uh, there is a notation of color touch. That The only problem with that is, let's be honest, the purple label is glaring. You, you see there's a problem. With the blue label, it can be missed. So I think they should keep the blue label. I agree with you. But there should be some kind of a, a symbol or something that's on the book to say, you know, it has an R. Put an R on it or a star or something. But I think the blue... I think people would be happier to have a restoed book if they were... Honestly, they matched. People are... People like things that match, right? We like balance. We don't want to see blue label, blue label, blue label, purple. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or green, right? So I get that 100%. 100%. Um... West Coast Avengers, TGC, do anything for the customer to help them? Never. <sighs> Look at they, they they do though. I mean, I, I've had issues uh where they've they've helped me, but oftentimes I, I have to be the one that instigates it, of course. They're usually quite um they, they they will help most of the time. But this is it would be an extra service, and I don't see why they wouldn't do that. Um to try to get their customers that blue universal label that everybody wants. Why would, and, and then you're also upselling. Isn't that something you want to do, upcharge? So, you know, instead of mailing the damn thing back, which is a real pain in the rear end, especially coming back to Canada because shipping is friggin' expensive. But if they would just made a quick email or phone call saying, listen, if we don't hear from you the next 24 hours or 48 hours, it's going to just go through as a purple or restored grade. Otherwise, let us know and we'll send it to CCS to have the resto removed, if possible. But they don't do that. You know, but they also never used to have uh, signature verification either, did they? And now they do. So that's, that's you know, who knows? Maybe they'll change their, their ways. Uh, West Coast Avengers, CBCS doesn't either, in my opinion, which is which is worse for customer service. I would have to agree. <laughs> West Coast agrees with you as well. Uh, West Coast Avengers, I once had a supplier account. I hated dealing with them. I tossed it away when they changed the service. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, listen, C CBCS, uh, you know, we 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 uh we all have stories, right? We we have stories for both companies, let's be honest, right? Look at this. One more one more time. Gorgeous. Love it. Um we all have stories. Um and of course, I don't I don't like that CGC is going to become the only show in town or maybe I shouldn't be, I shouldn't talk with, you know, as though it's a done deal, right? We don't know what's going to happen in the next year or so. My focus is kind of going in and out there, guys. Sorry. Um, we always want more more options, and I think that's great. But they just, like I said in last week's show, they just have had so many opportunities to to improve their customer service, to improve what they were doing, and they just didn't do it. They just didn't do it. When CGC had their debacle a couple of months back, they, you know, put a couple of commercials out to try to take advantage of their of their uh, of what was happening. But it wasn't it wasn't enough, man. They should have went guns a blazing, and they didn't. Um, all right, we got a few books left in this box, and we'll we'll talk about that 
wholeheartedly. Hold on a second here. Um, all right, next. We have, here we go. This is from our, this is also from our thumbnail. Batman 251. Nice, 8.5 is a nice grade on this. Very, very nice. Nothing wrong with that. That's a great Neil Adams cover there. Beautiful book. And we also have, oh, wow, look at that. Huh. We also have Iron Man 55. Nothing wrong with that. 9.0. I was not expecting a 9.0 on that, but I'll be happy to take it. And I think we're missing one more. Oh, there it is. Is that it? Yeah. Now, this, these next two are kind of a shock to me. I did not think these books were going to get this high. Um, I'm glad they did. We've got two ASM 300s. And they both got, well, one got a 9.6, custom label, of course. Ash is a big fan of the custom labels. And then another one, and also in a 9.6. I swear, guys, I thought I thought there was a chance for a 9.6 for one of them, but I thought we were going to be the 9.4 range more. Potentially one was going to get a 9.6. Both got a 9.6. Very happy to see that. But as I'm peering over there, I see another, another downer here. And again, I'm looking this one over. And I mean, at first glance, I'm not seeing any color touch. I'm seeing scuffs and white spots that could have been color touch, but we're in an 8.5 copy of, of X-Men 94, also saying small amount of color touch on cover. Again, like irritating, 8.5. Uh, so that kind of stinks. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. Whether we take them out and resend them or send them for color touch removal, I don't know. We will get back to it. Now, I have another box to go, guys, so don't go anywhere. There's 46 of you in the room right now. I want to know what you think. We were talking about it earlier. If CBCS were to go the way of the dodo bird, how would that make you feel? Would you miss them? I'm going to tell you, from my own point of view, would I miss CBCS if they go? No. No, I won't, because I don't use CBCS. I haven't used CBCS in, like, seven years. No, about five or six years. I have not used them. I had, I had one bad experience and then a second really, really bad experience and then I stopped and I didn't bother. For me, it's, it's purely business. I don't want to work with a company that, that takes, me, takes more of my time because time is very important to me. Now, CGC can really piss me off too in that regard because more often than not, they, they screw up on the shipping and, and that, that can be, you know, and that whole crack case scandal from a year ago was such a time killer. And I just don't have time for that. Um, so any company that causes me extra stress, um, I don't want to work with. Now, CGC is, as far as I'm concerned, the best and only choice as a business owner uh, to go to. That's why I, ha I continue to go to them. Now, if another company were to pop up and... Produce, pr provide a similar service at a better rate with better customer service. Um, yeah, you know what? Maybe I would jump on board. I would jump ship and go. But CGC is the... Look, look what I'm wearing, right? Coca-Cola. CGC is the Coca-Cola company uh, of, of comic book grading. It is the place to go to. It's the PSA for cards. It's the Beckett's for cards, right? People want CGC. They garner the most money. The slabs may not be as durable as cbcs but the slabs the design of the labels are in my opinion far superior and yeah i i, I and they get more money they tend to get more money at auction right especially with modern more modern stuff golden age stuff not so much but modern stuff yes so for me will i miss them no i won't personally what do you think um Oh, whoa, 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 day. Oh, I jumped a little bit. Sorry, guys. A 4%, CGT 4% charge for values over 1K is an issue for many clients. They did bring their prices down. But that 4%, yeah, for big books does stick. What they should have done, I think, is brought back another tier for books from 1,000 to 3,000 because there's a lot of books that fall in that 1,000 to 3,000, you know, uh, range. And by getting rid of that, it was it was called the walkthrough. No, sorry, it was called the express tier in the old days that kind of covered that. They got rid of that completely. And so high value books started at $1,000 now, not at 3,000. So I do agree with you. That, that was a kind of a shitty move, I thought, too. 
That'd be nice to get that back. Dave says, I submitted Amazing Spider-Man 300 and 316, both signed by McFarlane at Fan Expo Canada, to Freak Show Comics at NFCC for Verify Sig with CBCS last June. And what? Holy jeez, Dave. I'm sorry to hear that. that's ridiculous. Last June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February. That's like nine months. That's ridiculous, man. That's ridiculous. Now, back at the height, my turnaround time was nine months at one point. My turnaround time was almost at a year uh, just before COVID. And when COVID hit, it exploded. Exploded. And I, and I had over a year waiting uh, for, for, a lot of, for a lot of orders. But we're not in COVID anymore. Why the hell are your books still not back yet? That's bull crap. So I, I, I'd make some phone calls. Some very... Uh, Pointed phone calls or pointed emails is find out where the hell your books are. Peter J. G. Congrats on the 9.2 first appearance. That yeah, that, that wasn't first appearance of Supergirl. That one, his Supergirl first appearance got a 6.5. This is like uh you know uh, a second runner up where where he reveals Supergirl to the world. Still a great cover. Uh, Craig says, "Damn that X Men 94 is a killer." And you know what sucks about it, Craig? And even Adam noticed that as well too. And so did Eric as well. What sucks about it, I look all over the book. I can't see color touch on it. I'm not saying there's none on there, but when I see areas that could have had color touch on it and there's no color touch on there, I'm thinking, well, why would someone do color touch and not color touch the whole thing? Why would they just color touch one little dot and not other areas that require it? Um, perhaps the damage came after. I don't know. Um it hurts my heart too, so we're going to look into that a little bit more. RP, did CGC say when the new verified signature program will start and what kind of color label would it be? No details about color label, no details about what it will look like. It'll be a sticker maybe or a symbol on the blue label or a symbol on the gold label. Uh, April. They did say April. They didn't say early April. There's no pricing yet. There's nothing. So I, I don't know yet, RP. Uh, RP also hello Kevin and chat how you doing RP Craig says I like CBCS slabs I don't like their service I think they have a better product but worse service I don't know if that makes sense no I think that makes perfectly good sense because when I handle a CBCS slab and I'm sure many of you would agree that thing's uh, as a tank man and they're a bugger to open like even though CGC are kind of you know amplifying the glue usage on their slabs and uh, and sealing them all the way around now, the CBCS ones always take a little extra time to open up and they just feel stronger. I'll be honest, I have never liked any of CBCS's uh, labels. I think they've all looked like trash. Personally, that's me. Now. I just think aesthetically they're not as pleasing as the CGC ones. So, but that's me. Um, do, do, do. But I do like their slabs too. I agree. Uh, uh, Spartacus 204. I'm Spartacus. Uh, I'm Spartacus. As a signature company, does CGC do movie star signings like CG, like CBCS? So you, I'm getting Rosario Dawson sign Ahsoka comic cover. Yeah. CGC does have, if you're talking about CGC, they do have in-house uh, signatures from celebrities all the time. I think Sebastian Stan was there recently. Uh, I've had books sent in for Robert Downey Jr. to sign. That was a very expensive, it was 800 US for his signature. Um, uh, who else? I think um, a lot of the Star Wars guys have been there. A lot of the Marvel guys have been there. You know, so yeah, they do it. You, you just have to go to their website and, and keep an eye on that. But they, they were doing, over COVID especially, they were doing a lot of celebrity signings for sure. Uh, now using Halo. Now, you know what? I, I thought about using Halo for a while. I thought about becoming a Halo dude up in Canada because I talked to the fellow, I forget his name now, who runs Halo. He's a nice guy. He's out in Australia. And, you know, back in my, when I first started doing this, I thought, you know what? Because CGC was a real pain in the butt and being in the States is hard. And uh, there was some talk of me joining the Halo team and bringing it to Canada, but I just don't have the time. It was just, it just, it just became, uh, it was an impossibility. It was an absolute impossibility to me, for me to even think about doing that as well. So, but I, got, I give kudos to him for, for trying it and doing it. Cause you know, as being an Australian and being down there, it is, it is not easy to get books <clears throat> out or to Australia. Uh, I can't imagine how long the shipping would take to ship. I remember I used to ship toys to Australia. I'd sell toys on eBay sometimes, and I'd have a lot of Australian customers. It would take three months sometimes for a toy to reach the customer. So I, I wouldn't even ugh, to send comics there. Forget it. Eric says, I only own CGC slabs. I, I'm like 99% 
or CGC for me. I've got maybe two or three CBCS. Adam, what's your opinion on getting an inside cover so you're verified? You can't see it slabbed anyway, right? I guess at least it won't say writing on inside cover exactly. If you get a Jack Kirby on the inside or you have, you know, uh, I, I saw that John Burney to sign on the inside too, Stan Lee too, and all those guys, it was a thing to sign on the inside cover. Well, why not? get it verified. If you've got a Stanley signature, a Jack Kirby signature on the inside of a book, you, you want that verified. That's a pretty important uh, signature to have. Even a Todd, Todd would sign on the inside too, McFarlane, right? So yeah, I think I would have it verified for sure. I think it, if the service is there, why not? And, and especially if they're going to take points off for the signature being there. We don't want that. We don't want you to take a point off for a signature. Here, authorize it as best you can and give me the full grade possible. That's what you want. Um, you don't want to lose points for a signature, uh, an unverified signature. You don't, uh, I, you know. I can't imagine, I can't imagine, well, I wonder how much they are going to charge to authorize. I, I have no idea what, what to even expect to authorize a signature. Perhaps it's going to be 25, 15 to $25. I have no idea. Um, Adam, I have a John Byrne Terry Austin. There you go. I've seen that quite frequently. And those early X-Men there. It's the labels that do it for me. CBS just looked very... I just don't like them. They, they, they revamped them a few times. It's like, I don't know what it is. They just don't, they just don't look good. They just don't look good. In fact, PGX, PGX labels look a thousand times better than... than, uh, than uh, do you agree with me? Do you think PGX labels look better than CBCS? I think they do. I think they do. So listen, I think from what I'm getting from, from a few of you who've spoken up, I think the big issue a lot of people are having is I've heard people in like Facebook comments and Facebook can get pretty toxic and get, everyone's attacking each other. I try to stay away from Facebook uh, debates and whatever conversations can get really stupid really fast. Um, but a lot of people don't like the fact that they don't want a, a, a one, one place to go to. They don't want just one company. They, they don't want a monopoly running the show. And you know what? I don't either. It's nice to have, you know, two or three companies to choose from. It keeps everybody honest, you know, and it keeps, it keeps companies, uh, off, you know, updating their service, ex, you know, ex, expanding their service, improving their service. And that's, what's important. I mean, if you think about it, just two months ago, CGC was getting attacked for that whole scandal. Remember, remember that scandal from a couple months ago. Um, you know, and I think if, if West Coast Avengers is still on here, guys, you should go over to his 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 uh, YouTube channel if you haven't already. He did a whole interview with Matt Nelson about that scandal. Him and uh, Nine Point Nine Newsstand. It was a great interview. Go check that out. Um, and man, it was all over the airwaves two months ago, right? Those types of incidents where something like that happens, I think it puts a fire under the under, under the ass of these companies to to improve their service or, or to fix things or to make things better to kind of get away from the scandal. We don't want you know okay bad they say any news is any and even even bad news is good is good publicity right bad publicity is good publicity is that the, is that the uh, motto. But if it's bad all the time, that's not good. That's not good. CGC got a lot of publicity, negative publicity, in my opinion, uh, when it came to that scandal. But within that time, then they started kind of, they kind of, they started throwing like, you know, news, news bits out there, you know, 9.9 .9 pre-screening and kind of, kind of throwing, uh, you know, smoke screens up. And then they, they posted recently this whole uh, signature authentication service, which so far, I, I have not heard anybody complain about it. Everyone's really pumped about it, right? Um, which is great. So, you know, but to have another company uh, offering services and, and, and trying to one-up each other is a good thing. It keeps everybody honest, like I said, and it keeps people fresh, coming up with new ideas uh, and, and making sure everyone's service is top-notch. Because if there are no other shows in town, guys, we were talking about CGC's customer service. If they have no competition whatsoever, what's to say they're going to keep putting money into their customer service? If we have nowhere else to go and they got us by the you-know-whats, what's to say they're going to keep that customer service? So, you know, I do agree that is a concern of them being the only show in town. I don't think CBCS is going to go uh, bye-bye tomorrow, but I do think that this verification service is really going to hurt their, their sales. And yeah, I don't... Most people I talk to don't even want CBCS. And I'm only a small little presser in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada, right? 
but most of my clients, they have no interest. And the only time they did have an interest in CBCS was for signature verification. In fact, I just did a huge GI Joe order for Mark and about 10 or 12 books had signatures on them. And they were going to go to CBCS. I'm going to tell you right now, he's going to want them to go to CGC. I know that for a fact. We were talking about it even before they announced this. I want I want them verified. I, gee, I wish CGC had that service. Bang. Your wish has been granted, Mark. It's happening, right? Um, uh, Craig says, don't use PGX, guys. They lost my books, and it took a YouTuber asking them a question for them to even offer replacements a year later. They also have a huge conflict of interest. Yeah, I, I've heard all that, too. I don't want to get on a PGX bashing session here, but, you know, a lot of that, Craig, I, I have heard similar stories. I have never sent a book to him, to that operation. I've heard people complain similar to what you're saying. Um, but you got to remember something. When it comes to business, you know, and, I, and I've said this about pressers, I've said this about comic book stores, you know, just because you're a comic book fan, just because you might be a decent presser, just because you know your comic books really well, you know, doesn't mean you're a good businessman. Doesn't mean you're good with people. Doesn't mean, you, doesn't mean you're organized and you're not going to lose people's books and you're not going to, you know, so... There's a lot more, there's thousands of pressers out there now. We all know this. And there's thousands of, of comic book stores out there. And we've been to many. I've been to many. I'm sure all of you, whenever I go to a town in the States or I go to a different city in Canada, I always look look up the local comic book store and I go for a visit. And they're all very, very different. Some are very organized. Some are like a, a mess, an absolute mess. Uh, there was one in Niagara Falls I went to once. I couldn't even get around. It was so much junk on the floor. I couldn't. I almost tripped a few times. But all I'm saying is you just never know. Just because someone likes something doesn't mean they're a good businessman. So, you know, you mentioned PGX losing books or whatever. Okay, maybe his heart's in the right place. I'm not saying he's a bad person, but maybe he's just overwhelmed. Maybe he just doesn't know how to organize things. Maybe he doesn't know how to leverage other people to help him in his business. Because if a business grows, you need help. You can't do it all yourself. Anyways, a bit off topic there, but gotcha. Gord says, just waiting for April to bring in my Warp Elf Quest first signatures to you. Can't wait. Can't wait. Spartacus, question about grading. When the comic is stapled, but the spine is off to the side, will this know the great... I'm not sure I know what you mean. Are you mean like when the comic is stapled, but the spine is off to the side, will this lower the grade is that what you mean um do you mean if this if the, if the comic has like if it's not centered if there's like more white is that what you're can you kind of clarify that please spartacus eric putting together a small submission finally a couple of dave stevens books coming your way sweet eric can't wait can't wait spartacus says uh, uh also those asm 300s wonder if the owners are tempted to crack it and send them back to get the five people signatures cgc is doing soon yeah, they might. They might. I don't know. Ash, Ash, if it was the, if it was Ash's books, he didn't seem too concerned or interested in signatures. I'll tell you, a lot of guys don't like signatures. I'll be honest. And to be honest, I'm kind of one of them. I'm not a big signature guy. I mean, if it was... I don't know. I wouldn't want Stanley's signature on my AF-15. I just wouldn't want it. On the inside, in the inside, I don't mind it. But on my cover, I don't want you to sign my cover. You ruin it, as far as I'm concerned. But that's just me. And there's some guys who exclusively buy signature series, and they go cuckoo for it. Great. Collect them. Myself, I'm not crazy about it. I'm not sure if Ashes, he's never really said anything whether or not he's into signatures. Um, and by the way, Ash has got another big batch heading to CGC uh, tomorrow. So we'll see some more of his books coming back very soon. And he has even more books coming. I think that's, he's got more books coming as well from this order. I think if I remember correctly, um, Robert says, doc, I think the book I gave you two Saturdays ago will probably be going to CGC so they can authenticate the signature on the book, but it'll message you when that service is available from CGC. Perfect. Knock. Yes. Just bought a copy of dark Hawk and the staple line is a quarter off. Okay. From dead center. It's not a spine rule made that way. Yeah, it depends on how severe it is. If it's like, you know, like a, the white is like right over and even some of the back image is on the front, they, they're not supposed to knock it. They're not supposed to knock it because it's a, it's a manufacturer's error. Uh, it's, you know, but, but come on. <laughs> 
the book, you know, if it's, if it's just a little bit of white, yeah, I've seen them get nine eights, no problem. But again, if if the front cover shifted over a lot and some of the back covers wrapping to the front, they probably will. I think they'll dock it personally. They said they won't, but I don't believe it. I, I think they will. You know, if the if the book is, you know, if the image is shifted even anyway, I've seen them. I've seen the nine six, nine four, but yeah. Um, yeah, Rob says, is a CGC 99 pre screen still a possibility? There's been very little talk about it since then. I hope not. Have you guys seen that video that they put out talking about 99s and 10s and 98s? And if not, get over to the CGC uh, YouTube channel and check it out. And also check out how the dude handles the books. It's like he gets a brand new stack of books. I don't have any. Well, maybe I'll use my folders here. He grabs a brand new stack of books and he holds them like this. He's holding them here. I'll go over to my screen for a second. Ignore all the mess for a second. He grabs the books like this. And he's he's holding them. And he's going like this. He's kind of being very rough with the books. I'm like going, holy shit. I go, what the hell is he doing holding the books like that? Is he crazy? Like that guy's grading books. He's damaging the books. He's he's hold he's putting weight on the spines. It was really bad. Maybe I'm being too paranoid or a little too picky, but check out that. Check out that uh, video and tell me what you think because I, I didn't like the way he was handling the books personally. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I hope they don't do that 99 pre screen. I think that's stupid if they do. And if they do 99 pre screen, as long as it's for books that are like 2020 and up, that's fine. I don't want them doing 9.9 .9 pre screens on like, on like books from the 80s and the 90s. It's too, that's done. That's done. They should be from books from now on, from 2022 and on, or 2020 on. You want to do a 9.9 .9 pre screen? Even that I don't like. It should be the most recent, from the most recent year and on. That way people know that in 2023, CGC started offering 9.9 .9 pre screens on books from 2023 and up. All books from before that time, that's not happening because uh, that's just ridiculous. They've already established what a 9.8 nine is. The 10. Okay, they've established that. No, we don't. There's a possibility of getting a 9.9 and .9 a 10. Bullshit. A 9.8 is basically a 10, right? So let's keep it that way. Let's keep it that way. Um, they started this, they started that when they introduced their, their their grading system way back in the day. They can't all of a sudden, you know, 20, 25, 30 years later change it willy-nilly because they want to make a new service to make more money. Screw that. You've already established nine eights as being the epitome of the of you know the the high the grade to try to achieve a 9.9 .9 and a 10 should be reserved for those very very uber amazing special copies you know and that's it um fun fact pgx does signature verification they do not do kirby or ditko signatures though wonder why i don't he probably just eyeballs it i don't follow pgx's news i have no idea what they even do over there now that CGC has confirmed signature verification, what distraction do they have left and another scandal happens? Steve, exactly. I was just saying that, right? Is it a distraction? Uh, I was listening to Swaggle House earlier today and he was talking, well, from yesterday, there was an uh, uh, interview we did yesterday and they were talking about that, um, you know, that this probably was in the works longer than a couple of months. Let's be honest. The, the, the you know, acquiring a, 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 another corporation it doesn't happen in a week. So I, I have a feeling that this authentication deal was going on long before the, 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 um, the what do you call it? The, the scandal occurred. I think so anyways. I don't know for sure. No insider information. That's my thought. Spartacus 204. Yep. I bet the, I bet he got flack because some of those nine, nine had tears at top corners and he's the head of the department. Yeah. What the hell was that? If I, if I, if I saw my guys handling books like that, we don't handle books like that. I'd be like, Right. Here he's, of course, they're not going to be nine nines and tens. He just damaged half of them. Oh, I didn't get that at all. And he was, he was actually like getting them all. I don't, I can't give you an example. He was doing this to them too. He was doing, you know, taking the books and kind of making them strip. I go, you know, when you, he was tapping it on the, on, he was tapping the books on the, on the, on the, on the table like that in a stack of like 20. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? Yeah, you're not coming to work for me. Um, there's a co, does the COA help with attaining the yellow label? No, it doesn't help at all. They don't give a rat's ass about any certificate of authenticity at all. Now, if you're going to send uh, signed books in for signature authentication, I would probably send in the COAs. They may not want them. 
Maybe they don't give a crap, but COAs as of right now mean absolutely nothing. You're still getting the green label as of right now. Yellow labels now have to be witnessed, uh, so a COA does nothing. On the new verification program to come, I would guess not. JSA has their own database they will reference to verify. There you go. Thanks, Eric. Uh, Craig, RP, most COAs are just paper meaningless. You would need a COA from a well-known company. That's right. That's right. Uh, okay, you know what? Let's jump into the next box. We, we can keep this conversation going as well. We've got lots more comics to share with you. Actually, these, i got to put these suckers away first. Hold on. Hold on. Ugh. Here, give me one sec. I'll be right back. Let me put my, put my Be Right Back video on. And I will be back like in... I'll be back in like 15, 20 seconds. Give me one sec. Okay, we're back. We started off with a Simpsons comics and stories number one and a 9.6. We also have a newsstand copy of Daredevil 181 and an 8.0 white pager. We have a 9.2 copy newsstand again of Spectacular Spider-Man 107. Do you poo? Well, do you poo? Number one, uh, Counterpoint. Uh, this is the Strange Tales to Sell edition. This is in a 9.8 white pager with Tigger on the front cover there. Another Do You Poo number one. This is going to be the one with uh, Eeyore. Is that Eeyore on the front cover? Forgetting my Winnie the Pooh character. Also in a 9.8. Gonna bless all of you right now because now we have. That's, I think it's the first time this has actually been on my show. Uh, Life of Pope John Paul II, number one, Canadian price variant, and an 8.0. It's one you don't see every day. We have a Brian Polito's Lady Death, number zero, uh, fearsome edition. Oh, sick! It came back a 9.8 white pager. This was this was a real bugger to press. This was a real bugger to press. It had this weird friggin' texture that kept coming over here. Must have pressed this book like six times. And I thought, okay, we're done. That's it, we're not doing it anymore. And I'm glad it came back a 9.8 because I thought it was gonna come back a 9.6. Happy with a 9.8, for sure. Okay, so you know what? How about some more Do You Poo? Frosty Mug Foil Edition in a 9.8. These are pretty new from 2024. You can't really see much on that one. It's a 9.8 as well. <laughs> Someone today asked about, uh, have you had any tens lately? Well, we just did. We got a gem mint. Do you poo number one? Strange Tales to Sell Sketch Edition with, um, this is a little guy's name again, Piglet. 10.0. I guess it's probably pretty. Is that common in this book? I have no idea. But we got a 10, which is nice. Oh. You know, 10s are nice. 10 plus 10 is 20, and nice even numbers are great. So let's do another one. Uh, this one's got Eeyore on it. Sketch edition also in a 10. Nothing wrong with that. 10s are good. There you go, guys. We haven't seen 10s very often. Again, 10s are, you know, when it comes to modern books, it's not, uh, it's not super common, but it's not uncommon, is it? So uh, pretty cool. Let's put these babies away. We'll go back to the chat room as I do that. Uh, where is it? We're right there. And, uh, you guys can see the books as they go away as well. Um. Okay, more coming in here. Craig. Okay, no. Uh, oh, Groovy Kitty. Hey, Doc. Sorry I missed the last few shows. Groovy Kitty. There is no friggin' excuses. Okay, man? Like, seriously. <laughs> Sorry I missed the last few shows. Right, uh, right the heck uh, dodging that ng or purple rating on amazing fan right oh okay for dodge that the ng or purple rating on amazing fantasy 15 yes it was cool uh you're talking about you're talking about that amazing fantasy 15 
that I had. It was a, uh, a purple, it was going to be a green label because it was missing a, um, it was missing a, uh, a coupon inside the book. It was not a part of the, of the Spider-Man story, but nonetheless, it was still missing a, a coupon. Uh, hence, it was incomplete. And I put a little note on the on the submission form asking that they not give it a green qualified. And I'm pretty sure it would have come back a four or a four or five. And I said, just give it a real actual grade as though there was a universal and they did it for me. The book came back, excuse me, came back a 2.0 off white pager, I think, which is pretty good. So thanks. Uh, Craig, did you press that 10 or submit as is? Um, Craig, you know what? I'm not 100% sure. Because I don't have the invoice in front of me. If I had the owner's invoice in front of me, I could tell you that in a second. I am going to guess, though. No. I'm going to say these are probably did not require a press. I think. I'm not sure, though. But I, I, I would think they probably did not require a press. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. And sometimes clients will come in and say, Kev, I don't want them pressed at all, man. Just, just send them as is. And we get quite lucky and they and they come back really high grades, right? Modern books, if they're if they're if you if you pick your modern books very carefully off the shelf and you know put you know double board them with like 56 point boards and store them really carefully, they they're usually pretty good. You know, but you gotta pick the right copies, guys. You gotta pick the right copies. Um Jive Turkey says, someone's specking on rumors of John Paul II coming to the MCU. I think so. I think he's coming. I think he's coming, Jive Turkey. You're right. Oldman Bones, let's get the comic doc about 20 more thumbs up. That'd be nice. That'd be great. Got 31 likes right now. 55 concurrent viewers. Hit that like button. Help me out on YouTube, guys. You know, trying to get my numbers up. You know, I was doing Thursday shows. I just got a little overwhelmed. I'm going to get back to it again. I promise I will. I was enjoying doing it. I just, things have gotten really hectic the last few weeks. And I anticipate uh craziness until june once june hits end of june hits then we'll get right back to it again i might still do the odd thursday show here and there uh, i like bringing guests on here to shoot the breeze as well you just get tired of listening to this old fart uh but yeah any any likes you can give me i would certainly appreciate that um even over on my instagram page hit like me over there too instagram i got 25 i can't understand why i only have 2500 followers i know other pressers in the states they started up way after me and they're into the, in the 10,000 uh followers i've got 2500 and i think it's because i hate to say it because i'm up north that's what i think it is but maybe i'm wrong um spartacus cool to see some tens i asked that question as i'm going to send you an asm4 sin and i can't see anything wrong if the books are beautiful we are not going to work on your books we will just pack them up and send them as is really um I'll be honest, 98, 99% of the books need some attention. But like I said, if you pick your books very carefully, like I just sent a whole stack of books out for a new client. He came on Saturday. He gave me like 18 books. He wanted to send half now and half later. I'm not pressing any of them. They're all going as is. He, he goes, I don't want them pressed. Send them as is. One book I'm going to work on because it has a little crunch on it. It was damaged. So we're going to try to make it a little nicer. But all the rest of the books, they're, I didn't even look at them. He said, don't just send them. I said, okay. So I just... Enter the data entry and off they go. Easy peasy. Um, Groovy Kitty, it's Steve, by the way. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing how my slabs come back. Gorby Kitty, sorry. Uh, excellent. Well, hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. Will you be open this Saturday, Doc? RP, I will be. I will be open this Saturday. And um, yeah, it's going to be cool this Saturday because, uh, guys, seriously, I, I'm, I'm trying to pump the comic loft. If you haven't been there yet, Charlo and Nippur run the comic loft upstairs. They, I'm being honest, they bought, they bought out a store. I'm not going to tell you which store. They bought out, they bought all the modern books out of a big store in, in the GTA, I'll say that. And they've got 150 long boxes or some stupid crazy amount of, I'm surprised my, my roof doesn't cave in. And they're trying to get, get some of this stuff gone because it's a lot of books, but they were they are selling books for two dollars a pop. Now these books have been priced in the last year from this other store, and the prices on these books are anywhere from like four ninety five up to ten, twelve, sixteen ninety five. Now Charlo's trying to find the keys he can, but he today he goes, I'm not sure what I'm looking at here, and I don't have time. So 
if you are a modern connoisseur, you want to come to the shop, to the Comic Loft, especially this Saturday. It's opening at 11. They'll stay as long as they need to. $2 a book. And again, you might find some gems in there. They're pulling all these books out. So uh, I saw it's a lot of Deadpool stuff today, a lot of Fantastic Four stuff today, a lot of Marvel stuff. So if you are into, a lot of guys are into the modern, modern stuff. And if you know, you know, which book you're on key collector, you know, which ones you got to keep an eye on, you might find some gems. So on this, that's my plug for Charlo and Nippur. And he's also putting together a whole uh, section of variant covers too. So yeah, come on in. Come on in. I'll be there. Yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there Saturday. Man, I've been busy. Last Saturday, I was swamped. I got about 150 submissions on Saturday. I think more than that. It's getting... The, the submissions on Saturday are great. It's starting to be to really pick up. So that's awesome. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot to put this book out. Look at that. Another one. Do you poo number one? And that's a character from... Uh, like a Shredder character, I think, isn't it? Anyways, 9.8. Another one. A lot, of, a lot of these Winnie the Pooh books here. This one here is also a 9.8. Then we jump to a man thing number one and a 9.4. Another Winnie the Pooh book. Sorry, I forgot this one here. Do You Poo? Piglet 9.8. Got an 8.5 copy, newsstand edition of uh, Thor 337, uh, Beta Ray Bill. This book was frigging huge, eh, guys? Before uh, Love and Thunder came out, even before Love and Thunder came out, it was massive. Um, yeah, so there that is. We also have a Dark Hawk number one. This is one of Swaggle Haas's favorite books, I think. This one's at a 9.2. White Pager. We also have... An 8.5 copy of Detective Comics Annual 2, newsstand edition also. It's a big fat uh, copy with the, fat, uh, the square bound, modern square bound. We have a Transformers Generation 2. Don't know much about this book. In uh, a 9.0. It's on there. We got a Yusagi Ujimbo in a 9.4. Uh, number one. All right. Let me. Uh, oh, now there's a big book coming up. Don't don't go anywhere. It's not it's not a huge book, but it's a it's a nice book. Don't go anywhere. All right. Let's go and uh, put these babies away. And I'll look at this again here. Um, I don't usually judge, but but on the Pope John book. Why should should I want the confession <laughs> for better guidance? <laughs> Listen, I don't know why. I don't know why. I have no idea why. I mean, everybody has their reasons for, and we've we've talked about this before. Why do people get their books graded? Some are getting them graded because they want to sell them fast. They think that by grading them, it might they can maximize their profits or get as much out of their book as they humanly can. Others get their books graded because they're sentimental, because they belong to them since they were 10 years old or whatever, and it's a book they remember, and the book they want to kind of protect moving forward right and everyone's got their story i don't ask i mean i i do usually ask i mean i'm, I'm like you sure you want to do these books i mean are these really books you want to get worked on and yeah 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 i do i do i just love the book and that, 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 that's all i need to hear right so i don't i don't ask questions after that point um but i do think pope john paul is joining the MCU. So get out there and buy your copies. <laughs> Gordon Henderson. Pretty sure I know what store they came from. Sad story about why they were for sale, if I'm right. Um, so sad that is. I am not sure which store. I think I know the store. That's why I don't really want to talk about it, because I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, any store that goes belly up, for whatever reason, I hate to see. No one wants to see a store go. But all I do know is that the books are all very minty. They're a part of the store's core stock. There are some books from just six months ago, seven months ago. There's some really newer books there. And there's books that go back several years. There's nothing from like the 80s. Oh, there's, I think they have some books from the 80s and 90s. But it's mostly the last five, six, seven years, I think. So 
Um, and I know there's all kinds of variant copies. And there's, again, I, I wouldn't know. I couldn't make heads or tails. If it was me, I wouldn't know what the hell I was doing. It would take me 10 years to figure that all out. And that's probably part of the reason why I don't buy uh, collections like that. I just don't know enough about it. And to be honest, you know, knowing what these modern books are worth is really important. Really, you know, it's a part of the, if you're going to do business in that, in that realm, you should know what these books are all about. And, and even Charlie would admit, he goes, I, I know some stuff, but not most of it I don't. So take, what I'm saying, take advantage of his, of his ignorance, my friends, and come and get some great books this Saturday at the Comic Loft. <laughs> but don't tell him I said that. I don't think he watches the show, so I'm okay. Uh, could have been a known as copy. Yeah, you never know, Jive Turkey, right? Marco, how's it going, buddy? How's it going? Okay, here we go. There's another big one coming up. Oh. Oh, whoa. All right, we got some we got some more tens. We got some more tens. All right, here we go. Another one of these uh do you poo books in a 98, but then we got another another one, a Tigger one. It's a different book. And this is a 10. So we got four. I think we got four of them as 10s. Again, I don't know. I don't know if these books like came in 10s a lot. If you guys know if they did or not, please let me know. Because I, I really don't know. Uh, we also have a Hulk 340 in a newsstand. This is uh, an 8.0. Then we have another Winnie the Pooh this time. Um, this is a 2 out of 10 printed on cover. 10 out of 10, 10 gem mint, right there, another one. And then we have a 5.0 copy of, this book just went, I think. I'm pretty sure I just did this book. Uh, 5.0 copy of Batman Adventures 12, and a 5.0 first Harlequin. And this is the one I want to show you guys. Uh, so it's not white pages though. I thought it was white pages. Still a pretty cool book to have in a 9.8. You don't see it very often in a 9.8. Look at this. All right, here you go. Incredible Hulk 271. First appearance of Rocket Raccoon in the comic form in a 9.8. That's pretty awesome. I've seen them before. You just don't see them every single day. Well, that's it, guys. That's it for all the books. So if you want to head out, you can. If you want to stick around and chat for a couple more minutes, I'm here for you. Let's put these babies away and let's talk. All right. Um, no one's saying else. I think that's all you guys have been waiting for. Okay, no problem. Listen, guys. Um, again, if you are around uh, this Saturday, yeah, I will. I will definitely be at the shop this Saturday from ten till two, taking some more submissions. Um, also, I, I do have my one dollar bins. I have kind of restocked them. I restock them every, every week or two, so I always kind of add new stuff in there. So if you like to buy dollar books, and my dollar books isn't stuff. It's not from like the last two years. My 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 dollar bins are full of books from the eighties, some seventies, eighties, even some sixties actually, nineties, that kind of stuff. So if you're if you like to, to bin dive. Come on down and see me. But of course, uh, the Easter the Easter special is happening upstairs at the Comic Loft. Like I said, two dollar tons and tons of two dollar books, all are mint, all are bagged and boarded. Just come on over and and, and go crazy. Um, and uh, what else can I tell you? I'm um, I'm uh, we're currently working. I think in January, February books. We're gonna slow down just a little bit. Nippur has to head out for a little for a little getaway. Um, and Easter weekend's here, so it's slowing us down a bit, but we're still moving along pretty quickly. Turnaround time now for pressing, cleaning, and CGC grading in, to in its totality. You're looking at around between three to four months, which is pretty friggin' amazing. <laughs> Going back, uh, again, like I said, I was at nine months for the longest time. All right, let's see what you guys are saying, and then I'm going to head the heck out of here and get shipping. Um, nice babies, yes. Isn't that odd for it to be a 9-8 but not be a white page? No, you see it from time to time, Adam. Gord says, what is a store name and street? Well, we're in Oshawa. Uh, you can just Google the Comic Doctor, and you'll see me. We're in this exact same building. It's My, my shop is called the Comic Doctor Shop. Uh, I am located at 90 Russet Avenue in Oshawa, unit number five. They are also at 90 Russet Avenue. They're called the Comic Loft because they're upstairs in a loft. They're in an actual loft. And it's quite, their shop is bigger than mine. Toys, video games, action figures, 
Star Wars, uh, collector cards, you know, Marvel cards, comics, comics, and more comics. Uh, yeah, and uh, tons of slabs at the fifty dollar price point too. If you want to, if you want, if you're not into slabs yet, you want to start branching into slabs. He's got a lot of. They're not like nine, eight keys, but there are a lot of nice books, you know, important books at the fifty dollar price point. So hop on in, and check us out. Uh, or just Google us, you'll find us at our address there. Marco, I just picked up an X-Men 14 lower grade, was thinking to let you go go ham with the cleaning. Sure. Maybe to before and after online. Let's do it, baby. Let's do it. Bye, Eric. Take care. All the best. Happy Easter. Yes, happy Easter to all of you as well, my friends. Guys, that's it for me. I sure hope that you have a great rest of your week and you have a really amazing Easter weekend. Um, I'll be back again next Tuesday. More boxes on the way as we speak. Never ending here at the Comic Doctor Shop, guys. If you have got books you want pressed and clean and graded, sure, but please give us a shout. We'll be happy to help you. And uh, if you're in the area on Saturday morning, come on by and say hello as well. It'd be great to meet you. Guys, all the best. Have a great night. Anil, enjoy the poo. I mean the show. Cheers, Anil. Take care. I'll be seeing you soon too, Anil. Take care, everybody. Have a great night. Bye for now. See ya.